He joins us on the Harbor One Hotline this morning. Hey, Mike. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing okay, but you know, let's put this Brady thing to bed. When you, you know, a statue's good. I think Wiggy's right, but you know, he's got a um, he's got a movie about him out now. A groupy <laughs> groupy cougar movie about Tom Brady. <laughs> uh, have you seen the trailer? Oh, Gronk, you're so big. Oh. I mean, what the hell? Bite it's your so tongue. Pathetic. It's a very good movie. Oh my God! Stop it. <laughs> Just, he, Curtis I said the same thing. Curtis yeah. went with uh, 85-year-old Myrna the other night, one of the listeners, uh, and uh, she's in your wheelhouse, Mike, uh, and uh, and she uh, she loved it. Curtis loved it. Courtney loved it. Yeah, so think I, Miracle with an actual talented sports guy in it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. What is, what is – Mike Arruzzi is not going to like that. <laughs> Mike, what is, in your opinion, I know what mine is. I would say Mystery uh, Alaska, but what is your, what, what's the best hockey movie, movie ever? Don't say Mighty Ducks. You know, um, Young Blood. Young Blood. No, no, young blood. <laughs> <laughs> Has there been a good one? I don't know. Slapshot, I guess, uh, was pretty good. Yeah, you didn't like Racky, the original goon from Young Blood? <laughs> Get him, Racky. <laughs> um, well, it's yet to be. Yeah, it's yet to be made. Yeah, um, we were talking about it earlier. I, you know, it's a, it's a uh, long time ongoing discussion. But uh, you know, you look at uh, Gretzky, you look at Michael Jordan. Is Tom Brady the the greatest athlete ever? You know, if you measure by championships, um, he's certainly right in the conversation. I mean, I mean, and still, Bill Russell. I know time has passed, and I guess you probably have to pick greatest athletes by era but of this era um there isn't anybody that's been any better than him so i'd say yes yes yeah um courtney brought this up earlier um the uh these guys get a win before the all-star break and then uh they're off till the 11th i Mm -hmm. think Uh, is there any concern on your part that the that the that the break is bad for this team? I mean, I, I feel like they the the fatigue has been there, whether it's mental or physical. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, you know, I, I think it's a it's a good thing to have a break, um, but when you look ahead at the schedule, it's uh, it's murderous. I hate the All Star Game. I just hate the All Star Game for so many reasons. It's a fraudulent. You know, sponsorship related. Uh, let's touch all the big guys close and personal, and so we can get some more sponsorship money in the middle of a, a of a grueling season. When they come back from the break, it's just it's just crazy how many games they play in in sixty one days. I think it's thirty one in sixty two days. They have a two day break once and a three day break once, and otherwise they're playing every other day uh, and and or back to back it's just impossible to predict how they're going to hold up under that but so the break is good i'd rather have them sprinkle in you know off days and do the touchy feely all-star crappy thing sometime in the off season with the sponsors if you want to make them feel happy and steal their money kind of like the nfl does the pro bowl basically after the season but right. a week before the super bowl I mean, I, I guess I can kind of understand you on that part. The the thing that I, I was going to ask, Mike, when you kind of look at uh, the schedule and you talk about how it's so grueling, and I've heard, like, in maybe basketball they might have talked about this, Adam Silver might have said it, how would you feel about shortening the season? Or is that something that, you know, players would want to do? Is that ever a possibility? It's, it's about the the money obviously i mean you want to fill your buildings they've got these valuable buildings you want to make sure that they're busy but it's it's just it's it's really stupid when you think about it i mean you think about the number of games and the type of contact that takes place um over the course of 82 hockey games um and or even basketball games which is not as physical but certainly as a contact sport of, of some variety but you're traveling all around the country i mean these guys in this this span from when they come back in february till the end of the season they've got a west coast trip they've got a you know western canadian trip they've got a midwest trip and and they're doing that playing every other day and i don't know how you can perform at a level and i don't i don't know how you cannot make yourself 
vulnerable to injury when you play that number of games. And so, yes, I think it'd be smart to do it. Mm -hmm. Do I think they'll do it? Almost definitely not. But if it, you say it's about the money, then how does the NFL get away with it with only playing 16 games? Isn't there a way that if you shortened it, but you just made it more? I mean, there's got to be a way to shorten the season and still be able to make money, right? Well, you're going to make money, but you're just going to make less of it. I mean, right now the Bruins sell out every game. Why wouldn't they want to play more instead of less? <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just a – but it doesn't make sense in the – play. first of all, I think what really has to happen is the players have to get involved. Their average salary now is in, in the millions of dollars, three and a half, four million, whatever the hell it is. And if they took half a million dollars less and had a better situation with, with – 65 games or 70 games even and you could have some time off and some time with your family and maybe be safer it would make sense but they're gonna have to get really really involved in that and we'll see what happens mike we know how greg's relationship has been up and down uh with our former mayor marty walsh <laughs> uh and so i want to ask you the biggest development out of the search for nhlpa executive director He's, I guess, the top candidate right now. Uh, was that shocking to you to see his name kind shocking. of float out there? Marty Walsh. <laughs> I can't, can you believe it? <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but, you know, I guess he's had some labor experience, but I don't, I, I mean, he's in for a shock. I mean, it's going to be interesting if he, if he does, in fact, get it. Uh, and I'm surprised that, you know, and speaking of it all being about money, that's the reason why he would do it. I think that their present guy makes about three and a half, four million. And so Marty's looking for a paycheck. I mean, I, I would assume we would have immediate bike lanes accessing all NHL, <laughs> uh, all NHL barns in the, in the league. I think that might be a good uh, thing. I, I, it's, it's a head scratcher. I mean, you'd think they'd want somebody who's had experience in, in the sports world, but, um, but you know. I think, well, I think what it shows you, it's very similar to Charlie Baker being the president of the NCAA, I think it shows you that these jobs end up being all uh, politics. Mm. <laughs> like, like as a, and they need somebody who can uh, kind of work their way through. But they're uh, wrong for that because Major League Baseball and the NBA Players Association, I feel like, have two really good associations. And they're, both of their presidents are former players. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and the But the NFL does it. They hired Demora Smith, who was a lawyer, and now uh, I know, Mike, they're talk the NHL's talk well, talking about Marty. I almost feel like you get more from a former player that is in that world. I, I think you have to have some experience to get a feel for the players and what they want. And, you know, I don't know what he's – does he ever watch the hockey game? Is he a hockey fan? Does he Has he gone to Bruins games even? I, I mean, have yeah. some feel for – the sport and what the players go through and and then start to talk in terms of business. But I, I find it a little puzzling. Donnie Sweeney has a month left when it comes to the trade deadline. We talked with you a couple of weeks ago about Bo Horvat. They, they, they do Bruins not uh, getting that deal done. What What's your guess at what Donnie does? It, 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 and maybe, maybe it's nothing. I, I hope that they – take that southern swing as a barometer that they need some more depth, that, that their scoring went down, they were a little fatigued, yes, there's no question about it, but get another winger, add another quality winger, DeBrusque will help when he comes back, but you, there's still plenty of guys out there, and the timing of this is so important to understand. Like the, I don't know where Bergeron and Krejci are in terms of the future, but it's going so well so far this season you have to you have to take a bite out of the apple and and sort of seize the opportunity. I think not only that. I thought Carlo was horrible on the road trip. He was better last night, but um, he, he looked like he was beat up and tired. And they got to find some with the schedule they have. They got to this guy Zaboral, who I don't know if he's any good or not, but you got to play him. He's been on the shelf for like three three months give him a chance to play and see what he can do give a, give another guy a rest it shouldn't be punishment to sit out a player they should say listen the schedule's goofy we're going to give you a break and they need to get another defenseman and the depth chart another forward on the depth chart at least and start playing some serious uh, phone tag with your contemporaries because this is not going to last forever with the guys that you have and the age group they have in the in the center position you're probably not going to get another opportunity with this group. So 
go for it. Speaking of Don Sweeney, Mike, uh, just a shy of a month ago now, he signed Pavel Zaka to an extension. Zaka since then is top 10 in the NHL in points. Is this just a hot streak for Zaka, or is this a, clearly another uh, identifier of a stroke of Sweeney's, if you will? <laughs> wow. Wow. Aren't you something? Uh, <laughs> I'm really cooking today, Mike. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, he doesn't shoot that often. He's playing with some really good players. Um, he's a little soft for my taste, but he's a skilled guy. And I, I you know, I hope it's, uh, part of the, the, the long-term plan that he's going to be maybe the second line center. Uh, but I, I, this is, he's red hot. Good for him. Will it last? Uh, I, I don't think so. Mike, is there a chance? And I, I'm not sure if I asked you this before, but is there a chance that the Bruins can't get past the signed and he ultimately leaves in free agency? There's, of course, there's the chance. I mean, we're we're talking about a contract discussion that looks like it. I mean, I don't know if it's going anywhere during the the end of this regular season. But if I'm a player, I'm probably putting it on the shelf while the playoffs are going on. So then he gets perilously close to the end of the line, and you know, maybe he starts to think they don't love me as much as I want to be loved, or maybe you know, all of a sudden Bergeron and Krejci both decide to retire, and he says, "I'm not going to win here. I'm going to." try to look somewhere else. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, there were rumors that they were making progress, but, you know, progress is a long way from the finish line. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's a chance. I think the Bruins are obviously going to want to sign him, but how how big an ask is Pasta not making of them to to have this be a hesitation? You'd think it would be easy. You'd think it, it would be, you know, he's so obviously gifted and he's going to be around for a long time. You'd think they'd find a way to get to a number that everybody could say this is acceptable, but it hasn't happened. So somebody's somebody somewhere is being stubborn. It was crazy last week when we talked to you that you said, oh, just brace yourselves. We're going to hit a bit of a, a, a bad streak, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> and then going into Toronto, you had guys like Patrice Bergeron, uh, Brad Marsh, and nobody seemed like they were worried about that losing streak. And then after the game, Montgomery saying we're back to our identity. We always hear head coaches talk about identity, identity. What is the identity in your mind of this team? I think it's a puck possession team that can uh, can move really well. They've obviously included defense in their operation. Their goaltenders have been solid. Even by the way, on the on the southern swing where they didn't do so well, both goaltenders were excellent. I thought they were great. That's a real. I mean, for me, that was a real positive sign that they could hold up while the rest of the team was crumbling a little bit for a while. Um, and so, and they and they believe in themselves. So they come come from behind or they can handle a lead that they blow and, and still win a hockey game. It's a really resilient group of uh, puck possession type players with great backup goaltending and great regular goaltending. And so they're in a, they're in a position to say, we should believe I mean, the schedule coming up and I hate to belabor this, but it's going to take a bite out of them again. There are going to be some other stumbles along the way. It's not going to be an 850 winning percentage at the end of the year, but they still have such a lead that they, they should be able to get home ice advantage for the rest of the playoffs, barring any unforeseen major injuries. But it's going to be, it's going to be a tough go for about eight weeks here until the playoffs come and how Jim Montgomery handles his bench, uses his players, and sets them up for a healthy and – you know, ready to go run is going to be interesting. Speaking of coaching, last eight games, I think there's something like three of of 27 on the power play. What do you see there? And what are they? Because it's it's clearly a slump. What 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 do they need to do there? You know what they sometimes when you uh, find yourself in a ditch with a power play, you need to simplify. I mean, they they've been so you know wizard-like in their terms of their puck movement sometimes on the power play. Sometimes you need to just get it back to the point, have somebody stand in front, screen the goaltender, and look for a rebound. And that's that's really what it is. And you, you play so much, and then you start to actually get a little overconfident uh, on occasion, and you overpass, or over overthink the power play, get it back to the points, let them rip, and, and find a way to screen the goaltenders. That's usually a pretty good formula for shaking it free. All right, Mike Milbury, as always, a pleasure. Are you prepared for the uh, forthcoming doom of the uh, cold weather on the Cape? 
Yeah, no, I'll, I'll be okay. I just what's not going to be okay is the uh, Brady Cougar movie. Just bothers me. <laughs> you got to go see it. You have no, to. No, Courtney, yes. I'm not paying a goddamn nickel for that. Oh, no, uh, protect no your offense. masculinity. Don't want to watch a chick flick. Oh, I don't. A chick I mean, flick. Don't you, I, I want a good chick flick, not an you know '80s for Brady. I think you um, I think I think you're honestly. You're I'm dem- disturbed by this. <laughs> your your age group gets a discount on tickets. I think. <laughs> I don't know how much it'll cost you. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm telling you, watch. you'll cry during it. You'll probably watch it at like a scene. Goodbye. Scene somewhere. Goodbye. Oh. Bring your wife. Don't call me next week. <laughs> Share popcorn. Like, don't they have like All a movie right. day? All I right. remember my grandfather used to have like movie day in his building. Mike Milbury, thank you very much. <laughs>